in this last portion of the conversation, we wanted to kind of assess some of these ideas, draw out some of the good and the bad as we like to do. Um, we don't think Nietzsche is all bad. I think we can be critical of him rightly so, not just because of some of his writings, but how some of his writings have influenced both our contemporary world, but also even World War One and World War Two, which we'll talk about here. In right, a and bit. you also, in evaluating him, you have to separate those two things because he was not necessarily intending for right. his writings to have the consequences that he did, that for his writings to influence the type of people that they did. Mm-hmm. Although I will say this, and I think this needs to be said, you know, needs to be said on the podcast. He did have some deeply anti-Semitic tendencies, mm. and so did his sister. Really? Yes. And I think that needs to be out for Now, was he the cause or the motivator of the Nazi party? No, but <laughs> Nazis we'll were reading Nietzsche. They were reading Nietzsche. It was part of their training. Um, but again, I think you're right. I think it needs to be separated of like some of the influences he's had, because I don't think it's fair to, to just say he's the one that started this whole thing. Mm. But I think... Uh, I think it's important also to consider them. Yeah. Okay. So what did he say? That's, that's good. What can we say? Just a couple big takeaways from Nietzsche things that he said that even though we disagree with him on many fronts, there are some good aspects of his thought. I think one of the redeemable qualities of Nietzsche, which we didn't mention too much, but uh, right. So this, this presupposition. So if God is dead, then what do we make of our lives rather than suffering, rather than just falling into the deep, pit of non-existence right despair nihilism. despair he wants us to channel suffering into something positive mm-hmm. he wants to rather than avoid suffering or avoid the darkness he wants us to confront it to embrace it and to make it something good something that helps us grow something that helps us develop and i think the importance of suffering in the christian life is also important we don't say it's a good thing but we say that it's a redemptive thing yeah Right. And so I think that's one really more. Yeah. He seemed to be intuiting something of that in his thought, right? Yeah. That the goal is worth suffering for. And we would say the same thing too. Our goal, however, is love. Yeah. His goal was the exaltation of the self. Mm. So that's one thing. And then I think the second really important thing that Nietzsche got right was the consequences of what actually happens if God were to be dead. Which, by the way, we're living right now. <laughs> yeah, look around us. Um, you can't take God out of the equation and expect moral norms and society to continue functioning in a good way. If there is no God, then we are living in the midst of chaos. If there is no God, then life actually doesn't have any meaning unless you try to assert yourself and become the Ubermensch, which is actually ultimately a failure because you're going to die and no one's going to remember you anyway. Well, maybe they'll remember you if you're Napoleon. That's but true. But not but, for good reasons always. Right. But you hear this, like you hear atheists, people who deny the existence of God still live their lives as though God existed, right? Like saying everything happens for a reason or yeah. um, like we should, we should still all just try to be good people. Like if there's no God, why? Yeah. What is goodness anyways? Yeah, exactly. Without God, there is no standard by which to judge good from evil, right from wrong. And Nietzsche saw that. Mm. And I think he was right for seeing that. And unfortunately, he just draw the, drew the wrong conclusion that, in thinking that God was actually dead. And I think that's, that's right. I think him saying God is dead ultimately is a flawed statement uh-huh. so as, that's, as yeah. a strict statement, right? Right. Um, right. Going into kind of some of the bad. I think one of the things is that in holding this position that God is in fact dead is claiming the fact that he is. And we would say he's not. He, he did die, but then he also rose, actually, it turns <laughs> out, from the dead. Um, and I think that's important, too. Right? And I, I, and I do think that's one of the things that can be criticized about this kind yeah. of context of his larger thought. Yeah, he was, I mean, he was atheistic, and atheism is wrong. So that was, um, atheism is often understandable, in in uh, when you dialogue with people who are having these thoughts, but ultimately that was a that, that was a failure in his system. Also, another kind of negative kind of negative aspect of Nietzsche's <laughs> thought is his nihilism, right? Yeah. Which again is the natural consequence of there being no God. Yeah. But what a what a path towards despair. What a, I mean, and he tries to to ward off that despair, right? By the will to power, by becoming the Ubermensch. But ultimately, if there is no God for me, it's like, what is the point? Also, like, while it is paradoxical that he both is saying that 
God is dead and so we have no meaning. So exert yourself as a meaningful one. She, she tried to do that at a family dinner. <laughs> exert yourself at a family dinner. See how well that goes. Yeah. Tell your dad to shut up. Tell your mom to be quiet. Right. Do do your own thing at a, at a family dinner and see how well that goes for you. See, see how it, meaningful it, it might is. Get better. Right. And and so I think that's important to hold here. Like if you will yourself to power, expect the worst because nobody likes an arrogant person uh, because that's not what we're made to be. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's that's an incoherence in his system. I guess as I'm thinking this about thinking about it right now, he claims there's no God. He claims there's no meaning. And then he tries to impose this artificial meaning through the will to power. Yeah. But ultimately, if there's no God, there is no meaning. Thanks be to God that there is a God and he is meaning and he is reason and he is the logos who became flesh. And then finally, is there anything else that we should say about him being about some of his the negative aspects of his thought? I do want to emphasize, or actually we've already mentioned this, but I do want to say it again. There was to some extent some influence in the Nazi party. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important to say because it's true. He was read um, fervently by some of these people, probably not everybody, and probably not believed to be true by everybody. But he did have some I think some I think our professor told us that it was not uncommon for soldiers in World War II to be carrying around copies of Nietzsche. Yeah. And so just like in on general. On the battlefield and like yeah. almost meditating on them as they mm-hmm. prepared to go murder other human beings. Well, yeah. So communist regimes hold that there is no God. Mm-hmm. And so from that logic, this would seem to hold. Yeah. If there is no God, then the self is the organizing principle of reality. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, yeah, I think that's some of the good, some of the bad, some of Nietzsche's thought. Basic summary of Frederick Nietzsche. Now you know. And maybe you didn't know before. Hopefully you care now. <laughs> and also, I just want to also point out, he's, he's a deep thinker, right? This, this episode is by no means an exhaustive. I think uh, he's worth reading. I think so too, you actually. Know, like Michel Foucault, I probably wouldn't recommend. Yeah, go pick up him and read him for fun, although you could. But Nietzsche, I think he has insights into human nature, into... Yeah into the way things work that, that are that are worth reading. I think it's also fair to say that he was kind of prophetic. Yeah. In the sense of him saying God is dead. Well, crap, dude. What are you saying about the Christian faith? Are we failing? And I think even the Second Vatican Council, for example, was like, hey, church, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need some help here. Y'all need to do something because yeah. uh, there's people knocking at the door and they may have dead bodies on them and we need to figure out what exactly we need to do with, with, with these dead bodies here meaning like old old things that nobody cares about anymore yeah. and, and all the i mean the carnage of world war one and world yeah. war two the, the the chaos the the despair and you can see again how somebody like nietzsche would be popular after these world wars mm-hmm. and how he would be kind of the poster boy right for postmodernism for postmodern man because Wars have happened. Yeah. These things that we said were going to help us didn't work. The Christian faith that was holding things together is no longer has much say, which, by the way, I think could be argued with some of the reason why World War One and World War Two happened. Like, when you remove God out of the equation, how does society exact function exactly? How do you hold a meaning exactly? What are your reference points and sources for the dignity of man mm-hmm. and charity and love? How exactly do you live by those things? Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, let's be good to each other. What is goodness? Well, how do we, what does that yeah. mean? Um, and I think that's, yeah, my last final little bit.